Hi, it's Donna, your homegrown gourmet, part of the Gourmet or Good Enough team with my sister, Diane. Today, I'm going to make blackberry jelly. Let me show you how. To get started, I have about 12 cups of frozen blackberries, and I'm going to add them to a large stock pot. A cup of water. just so that they don't uh, burn on the bottom. And I'm going to turn the heat on. So we're gonna let this cook down a little bit, mash it, and strain it. Okay, so as you can see, I pretty much mashed it thoroughly. You don't wanna cook this necessarily, we just wanted to um, warm it up enough so that the juices started to release. Now what I'm gonna do is run them through my food mill. And I'm just gonna take a little bit at a time because um, this is quite messy and I don't wanna splatter all that juice extracted and the pulp will be left behind. Today I'm using a um, recipe from my ball canning jar booklet. And I will include the recipe in the description on this video. So my recipe calls for three and a half cups of berry juice. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. Okay, three and a half cups. It's gonna go in the same pot that I originally cooked the berries in. The reason I want to use a nice big deep pot, we're going to add uh, five cups of sugar and it needs a lot of room because once the berries come up to a boil, they are going to splatter everywhere and you just don't need that mess. So in it goes. Get every last bit. Okay, so here is our three and a half cups of blackberry juice. To that, I'm going to add an entire package of Sure Gel. And I have allowed my juice to cool. You don't want to add this to hot uh, liquid. And then I'm also adding two tablespoons of lemon juice. And we're going to stir that together. And then we're going to turn the heat on. And we're going to bring this to a boil. My juice is boiling. Now I'm going to add five cups of sugar all at once. We're going to stir this together and uh, let it let all the sugar dissolve. I'm turn the heat back up again, now that I got all that sugar dissolved. And we're gonna bring it to a rolling boil. And what I mean by a rolling boil, it's a hard boil that if you stir, it's still bubbling around you. That's a hard boil. So once it comes to that stage, we will cook it for exactly one minute. Okay, so we are at a rolling boil. Now I'm gonna put my timer on for one minute. Okay, I'm going to remove this from the heat. Okay, so we're going to fill our jars to a quarter of an inch from the top. We have a handy dandy guide here. Good. So now we take our lid that's been in uh, hot water. And then our screw top. And we want to tighten it finger tight. Okay. We want to make 
sure you go around the rim. You don't want anything to mess up the seal. And these uh, lids have been sitting in warm water. And that helps them adhere better when you uh, put them in the hot water bath. Okay, last one. Okay, these are going into my hot water bath for five minutes. Well, they're going into the hot water bath. I'm going to wait for the water to come up to a boil again, and then five minutes. Okay, I had to add a little bit of water because um, they need to be completely submerged in water. They're sitting, uh, you saw the little basket, the basket sits up, so it gets circulation underneath as well but you need to have the jars covered by at least one inch of water. My blackberry jelly has been pulled from the hot water bath. I'm allowing it to cool for 24 hours, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about safety and canning. Of course, we always wanna start with sterilized equipment, and that means the jars, the lids, and the rings. This is the lid. It has a rubber band on the inside. I put that in warm water as I'm canning because you want to soften that so that when it does attach to your jar, it creates a really good seal. So you want to soften that up a little bit in warm water. Then you put the band or ring, they're sometimes called, on your jar and that creates the seal that you want so that you have a nice bath. For storage purposes, you wanna remove the ring after 24 hours, okay? And that allows your lid, if there is an issue with the vacuum seal, the lid would pop. There's a little button on the inside and you would see it pop up. I have purposely uh, unsealed this one so I could show you. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can probably hear it there's a little button there. So that means the seal has been broken. And that's okay, you know, if your seals don't completely um, adhere when you're canning, that just means your product needs to be put in the refrigerator and you have to use it up within a couple weeks. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're storing it for long periods of time and you notice this, then there's a problem with the seal and it needs to be uh, discarded. So the other thing is never store on top of one another because that does not allow the button to pop if there is an issue with, uh, with uh, storage, okay? And then lastly, date, and then uh, use your um, oldest dates up first. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Those likes really matter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gourmet or Good Enough. Ciao.